This article via Variety is titled Crisis at Marvel, Jonathan Majors Backup Plans, The Marvel's Reshoots, Reviving Original Avengers, and More Issues Revealed. Damn. Uh, this is via Tatiana Siegel. In terms of this author, there have been some people that are like, this person might not be as reliable, you okay. know, done some stuff in the past which might not be accurate or whatever, but I think that's also just all journalism. Especially like media journalism, you know? yeah, right. It's like it's all rumors and conjecture, and, and, and well, it's rumors and conjecture, and I think especially with Marvel, a lot of stuff does change on the fly. Yeah, you might have the latest hot goss from the last meeting they did, but then the next one, the next day, they change their mind. Yeah, there's a bit to get through here, so I've broken up into different sections, okay. including the post end game decision about how to move forward, what's going on with Kang as the lead villain, the Marvels underperforming. Uh, the unsustainable VFX expectations, what happened to She-Hulk, what's going on with Blade, because that's where oh, yeah. he knows at this point. The one bright spot which happened uh, at Marvel recently, where the product is kind of heading to now and what will become of it. What the product? Yeah, pretty Ugh. much. Yeah. Ugh. And by that, we're talking about, like, some people they might bring back to help revive things and also what they want to do with other products Yeah, oh. to revive oh. also. Got to revive those products. That's right. <laughs> Avengers, revive those products. <laughs> Start with this. So the post Ed Gabe decision was, according to Inside Sources, that there was never to be a lapse in superhero fare with either a film in theatres or a new television series streaming at any given moment. Now, this was Bob Iger's decision, right? Yeah, he might have been stepping aside at this point. But I think that was just the general consensus was just like, we just made two of the biggest movies of all time. (laughs) Unparalleled success after a decade or so of putting movies out. That's right. There's no reason why we can't just keep Keep this going. Yeah, keep it at this level. (laughs) Nobody, Nothing will ever drop off. And if we make more, then it will just be more money. It's leaving money on the table, isn't it, if you don't just continually release the thing every day. That's right. Uh, But, of course, that's very much not the case because we've got a comment here from Joanna Robinson who wrote the book, MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios. So it says, there are signs that the flood of product is leading people to tune out. Flood of product. Yeah. I'm not prepared to call it a permanent fall, but based on the numbers that go with the Marvel's podcasts, Marvel-based articles, friends who do Marvel-based video coverage, all of these numbers are significantly down. Well, we used to do, you know, more Easter egg videos and all those kinds of things, mm. and we used to do a video for every Marvel show as it happened. That's and it true. Like, and we'd do a recap every week. Now we're now we're just like, uh, recap halfway. Yeah. Uh, I'm busy that day. Yeah. Recap Recap at the end, maybe. Maybe. Recap at the end if they really pull something truly bizarre out at the end. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But the ensuing tsunami of spandex proved to be too much of a good thing and the demand of churning out so much programming taxed the Marvel apparatus. More so, the need to tease out an interwoven storyline over so many disparate shows, movies and platforms created a muddled narrative that baffled viewers. Like, we do know that it is this multiverse saga Mm. and we do have, like, a general idea that we're heading towards Kang, potentially. Mm. We're already there. Or we um, were there years ago. Yeah. <laughs> we were there in Loki, season one. Yeah. But we know that. I think if you ask the general populace, they're like, yeah. oh, I don't know. Who's yeah. the bad Our guy? Our livelihoods depend on us knowing it, and we're still like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Well, speaking of, because let's move on to Jonathan Majors being replaced as Kang. So at a gathering in Palm Springs. Oh, la di da. I know. It must be nice. It must be nice. <laughs> Executives discussed backup plans for replacing him. Of course, he's involved in a legal battle, which involves a physical altercation that he had with an ex-girlfriend mm. that is currently playing out. Yeah. This is not something, again, we want to, when these things happen, and they do often. Yeah, and we don't know any more than anybody else yeah. in the public. So That's right. Um, but that's the, the trial is happening this month, I think. Yes. And so they were immediately like, we might have to pivot this into another comic book adversary. Mm. And the idea was floated, though. This probably isn't happening, but it just says, like Dr. Doom. Like Dr. So it's Doom. like, what if we just change this yeah. into Do- – what if Dr. Doom showed up and he, and he killed all the Kangs in the stadium? Yeah. And then he went, I'm the bad Luckily, guy. I've got a beam, he would say, <laughs> and I got you all. It's a Kang execution. It's, it'll it'll obliterise all these time atoms. All I've been working on this for a while. Yeah, that, that's why you haven't seen me. <laughs> Because I've been doing this. And it gets everybody, just to be clear. If you think there's infinite numbers. If he goes through a portal, it actually could actually go through the portal. It could yeah, follow him. That's right. He'll be waiting at his house when he gets there. <laughs> oh, I love this quote. Marvel is truly fucked with the whole Kang angle. Kangle. That's good. Kangle. Yeah. Like the hat. Like the hat. Says one top deal maker who has seen the final Loki episode. And they haven't had an opportunity to rewrite mm. until very recently because of the WGA strike. But I don't see a path to how they move forward with him. It does kind of feel that way that whatever the outcome of this is, 
Um, it's pretty damaging, yep. even the stuff that seems to have been confirmed at this point, yeah. where this is not a universe where you want a guy, like a thousand of this guy. Absolutely, yeah. You know? uh-huh. But I mean, you know, I can understand why they might want to, you know, spin it into gold in the sense that they go, well, we, we've we set this guy up as a, the d- most dangerous guy and there's a thousand of him. What if another guy shows up and defeats him easily? That's right. And he must be the even more powerful guy. Yeah. Simple. It's, easy. It's very It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Now, in terms of the Marvels, the cost of that movie is $250 million, and it's unlikely to make its budget back at this point. Uh, early test screenings resulted in middling reviews. Mm. Now, middling um, middling's not terrible, but, sure, but middling but... isn't recommend to your friends. But also, I think that's probably, that worked in the past. People seem to be on board with it. Like, I was speaking to a guy today, and he was like... Yeah, I just, like, I can't get behind any of this stuff anymore. Yeah, right. Like, he's like, it's too much. It should have paused or stopped. Yeah. And that's also the audience they need. They need a normal guy. Yeah, we you know, we always talk about how the true fans are out there and they're making demands, whether it be DC or Marvel or what have you, but they don't move the needle. Absolutely You know, 100,000 very devoted fans slash yeah. insane people spamming hashtags and doing all this sort of stuff. Right. They don't need that. They need millions of regular people who are indifferent to the deep, deep, deep law exactly. to be like, I'll see this. It looks fun. You look at like Barbie, like that did well because it got most of everybody, mm. you know, like we enjoyed it. That's not for us. That's We're true. not fans yeah. of that. Mate, we would never. It's a girl thing. Girl thing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You just need general audiences. Yeah. Not to say the general audiences haven't, gotten on board with the law. No, that, like I'm that's sure, what, it has happened. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like if you quizzed a regular person on the street about Iron Man or whatever, I'm sure they would know a bunch of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All that aside, Mason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so apparently eyebrows were also raised when director Nia DaCosta yes. began working on another film while the Marvels were still in post-production. Uh, the filmmaker moved to London earlier this year to begin prepping for her Tessa Thompson drama, Hedda. People were shocked and pearl clutched because they're like, oh, she, she abandoned this project, did she? Yeah. But as I understand it, that's not uncommon. Well, not only that, so Kaleida said, we've heard this report uh, is not true and she's very much involved in the editing process while based in London. It's also not uncommon for Marvel to just be like, this is our movie and we're going to edit it however we want anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And they yeah. might not even need her. And also, it's also not uncommon for filmmakers to be working on multiple projects at once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. While something is in post-production, they can also work on another thing. Yeah. James Gunn is running the DCU. And, and he, he also did he Guardians released Guardians yeah. and, and that all. And, like, those things happened concurrently. Nia DaCosta, I think, was on the Blank Check podcast. Mm. And she said that the reason she did the Marvels is to pay off her student loans and it didn't cover everything. So, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What a state to be in. Yeah. Where you make... <laughs> A $250 million movie and you don't get your student loans covered. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. There is some speculation here. She is being set up to be the fall guy. And I'm not talking about Ryan Gosling's fall guy. <laughs> sure. This movie is obviously going to underperform for a bunch of reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're going to be like, well, you're in director jail now. Another portion of this article was unsustainable VFX expectations. Uh, there's a quote here that said, the pay and long hours at Marvel were the reason that we had to, st- had to start the unionization process there. The conditions were completely unsustainable. Now, we know this because we've seen like the results of that in their TV shows and movies where you're like, what does that look like? Absolute shit. Yeah. And uh-huh. it's because now because there's like 20 to 30 episodes of a TV show a year plus two to three movies plus any special events that they might want to do. And, uh, and there's only a limited number of VFX artists right. in the world. That's right. Exactly. And they're being crunched to death. Mm making this happen in a big wheel yeah so it's evident in the likes of like quantum mania and she hulk which there are moments in that where you're like this looks pretty great and there's moments in it where you're like what what's happened what yeah yeah and i think you might have something in there about that in the sense the revelation there seems to be a lot of stuff was moved around in the editing bay some stuff that was meant to be in a later episode was moved to the first episode exactly yeah Mm. You're exactly right. So in She-Hulk, in the original arc, there was a flashback of star Tatiana Maslany's transformation into her Hulk character, and that didn't take place until episode eight, which was the penultimate episode. But after Marvel's brain trust watched the footage... Uh, Duh, we're the Marvel brain trust. Why is this so late? It should be earlier, because it's origin. It should be first. Uh, it realised that the scene needed to happen at the pilot episode so audience could see the more of the character's backstory early. Okay, sure. And that meant that the VFX team were tasked with fixing it in post-production. So the idea of the so-called bad VFX was because of half-baked scripts 
and they said specifically that this was not Victoria Alonso's fault. Uh, it was Kevin Feige's. Whoa. Now, the reason I say that is because Victoria Alonso was fired. It says here, the guillotine fell on Victoria Alonso, who oversaw the studio's physical production, post-production, VFX, and animation. And while the cited reason for abrupt firing was the unauthorized role that she played as an executive producer in the Oscar-nominated film Argentina, 1985, in studio say that Disney was incensed that quality control on its Marvel productions was plummeting, which is kind of a wild take to have to mm. be. Yeah, if again, if the, how much of this is true? I've, That's true. I have no idea because also, like, I don't think that necessarily clears her because she was still crunching a bunch. <laughs> Jury's still out. You're saying? You know, I'm just saying, like, you're still crunching a bunch of VFX people. That's true. You know, yeah. To get this done at like mm. low cost. It's still rude. It's still rude. And also each episode of She-Hulk cost $25 million. Damn. Which you might think is a lot of money. Is it more than an episode of Game of Thrones? Is that the comparison? Yeah, I would say so. Maybe not the later seasons, but yeah. Blade though. Blade. Look. I'm Look. Listen. Okay. Listen. As the brains trust here, I think that this feels quite unsubstantiated if it's the- Completely agree. But I, you know, I, I would understand the frustrations of the star of the movie- just oh, yeah. generally, even if even if there's the one specific claim here that I don't think is true, but yeah. continue. The project has gone through at least five writers, two directors, and one shut down six weeks before production. Now, that is true. That you is. can take that to the bank. That's right. Take it to the bank. See what you can get for it. One person <laughs> familiar with the script uh, says that the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. Blade was regulated to the fourth lead. I don't um, think that's true. That's the part I don't think is true. Yeah, you know, there could be an idea that, you know, you have the characters who oh, who are new and they're like, what's the deal with Blade? And they're like, well, Blade is actually he was born a vampire. But yeah. He's got, like, you know, those people yeah. exist in movies. We have, a bunch of, we have a bunch of point of view characters that get us into the adventure and we're, we're regular. Yeah. Boy, it would certainly rock my world if a vampire guy showed up. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. First of all, they're apparently looking now to spend about $100 million on Blade, which is well under what they mm. normally spend. And I think that's very possible. But Mike Starberry uh, wrote this on Twitter. I worked on a draft of this before the strike. Never saw a version where Blade was fourth lead or it was a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. Blade, <laughs> you can't go around killing vampires. Oh, but I want to love doing it. It's fun. But I suppose a lot could have happened since I had anything to do with it. He was in 99% of the scripts I was part of. But yeah, $100 million, which, you know. Also, I don't think they could do it. I think they say that. I don't think they could actually do it. No, I mean... Directors can, you know. Yeah, yeah directors at, can. Yeah, as, as Different studios no, can. <laughs> as, as we've seen, you know, quite recently, whether you liked the creator or not, that was a movie that looked incredible, I think, for a, quite a low budget. That worked because their processes and their system isn't Marvel's system, which is just film a bunch of stuff and then figure it out later and put it on a, a, yeah. some, some lowly VFX guys, whereas something like the creator is know what you want to do in advance and lock it in. And Absolutely. Absolutely. You could do it on, like, you know, the first Deadpool. Nobody was watching, so they made it for, like, $60 million. Yeah, uh-huh. And, like, that's fairly similar in terms of power sets and action sequences, I'd imagine. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. Just a guy with a sword leaping about, yeah. you know, going, hey, man, or whatever. And I also read, I don't know if you have that there, I don't know if it's part of this article, but there's a sequence in the Moon Knight TV series. If you recall, there's a Moon Knight TV series. Maybe you've forgotten. Yeah, I remember. Uh, but there's, like, a mirror sequence in it. Yeah, yeah. It took 10 months to do that. What? Yeah. I don't even re- I barely remember. Yeah, right? <laughs> He's sort of looking and there's yeah. another him maybe or whatever. Maybe one of them's like, I'm in the costume now. But I think that's a case of, and you know, mirror sequences have been in movies yeah. since filming of movies began. Use mirrors. Use generally. Mir- generally use mirrors. It's pretty easy. <laughs> uh, but I would imagine it's a case of they just filmed him going down a hall and they yeah. were like, what do we put in the mirrors? We don't know yet. Yeah, so. absolutely. So one of the bright spots was that uh, Guardians 3 performed really well and people liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, of course, James Gunn is now at DC. That's true. So he was the driving force behind that. The cast is not entirely, but mostly moved on. We I know won't. Peter Quill's coming back. Then. Yeah, I mean, Dave Bautista at the very least said, I'm not going to do another one of these without James Gunn. So. Exactly. Sources say, though, to <laughs> combat all finish? of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, there's a few things to wrap up on. To combat this, we're going to fire all the VFX guys and start again with new VFX guys. Perfect. Straight out of high school. <laughs> they probably could. We're going to start our own... VFX Academy, and it's going to be built on crunch and bullying. The bones of the previous VFX <laughs> artists we've right. killed. We're going to crush them up and we're going to mix it into the cement. <laughs> so sources say that there's been talk to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. That would include reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, Scarlet, and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. This could prove costly. Um, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they make note that I, Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man 3 alone, and it would have increased 
in subsequent movies made twenty five million dollars, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's not including like back end stuff. I'm that's presuming true. which he also had. Mm. Uh, He's got he needs the money to restore those cars. Exactly. You no, know, somehow I think there is. I think there is a plan to, regardless, to bring a bunch of these people back, like Captain America for Secret Wars or what is it? Secret Wars and it's Kang Dynasty then Secret that's Wars. That's right. Yeah, maybe who knows? I feel like this would be lunacy. To be like, what people want is if we just bring back the original Avengers team. That's not a fix. I don't even think it would work. I agree. I yeah. think I completely agree with you. It's, yeah. It would feel kind of unearned and a gimmick. And also they did that. Like Endgame was, do you remember the first Avengers movie? We visited it. Yeah. In yeah. the movie. That's true, yeah. So I don't know whether, I, again, I think there's, some of them are probably coming back. Yeah. If they think that's a solution to everything, yeah. that's fucking insane. And also my uh, thought here would be, my singular thought, would be that you bring in back Robert Downey Jr. for another full movie, are you? Or a series of full movies? How much is that going to cost you? Yeah. And also, do you think he's going to want to do that? After Oppenheimer, the next thing to do is just go back and be Iron Man again? For like $30 million, yeah. Maybe. Or even more. Wasn't he in Spider-Man Homecoming? Wasn't it like $50 million? Yeah, it was crazy, whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. for like his five minutes of screen yeah. time. If, I mean, there's a moment in that where he's at a wedding, and I think in real life he was just at a wedding. Yeah, and he goes, maybe. you can come to the wedding and film yeah, yeah, me at the yeah, wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Do not disturb anyone at the wedding. You can use a long telephoto lens because <laughs> it's either going to be an insane amount of money, which they may or may not make back, yeah. or it's just a, a cameo where he's – in a video or his yeah. the hologram head version of Iron Man totally. or whatever, and people will very quickly go, spoilers, it'll go on Twitter, spoilers, right he's only right, in yeah. it for five minutes. Yeah. So this last bit's interesting. So they've said here, the key to reviving Marvel is to use the superhero arsenal that was acquired in 2019. So X-Men, Fantastic Four, and then, of course, you've got Deadpool coming up, mm. which is a movie that people are genuinely seem to be interested in. Yeah. And I think that's true. I think they're kind of muddling their way through it and there's no real clear indication of who's even the head of the Avengers. That's true, yeah. You know, it's been a long time since the last Avengers movie at this point and we're not going to get one until 2025 at the earliest. Yeah. I feel like they probably were putting feelers out of to be like, of the new guys, who do people respond to the most and they'll be the new leader of Mm. the Avengers. But they haven't even – you're not putting Doctor Strange or Anthony Mackie's Captain America or whoever in like in little cameos at the end of movies and being like – Hey, I'm still here, by the way, and I'm leading the Avengers. We have to do a multiverse together. We've got to do a multiverse together, exactly. exactly. I think maybe Chadwick Boseman passing away was probably yeah, that. If, definitely. if anything, he was probably going to be front yeah. runner for leader of the new Avengers. Because it was going to be like Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, I think, yeah. Black Panther, and Tom Holland, Spider Man, who I think they've, I saw this week, he's Spider Man Prime. Because apparently, the story, one of the elements of the story of the new Deadpool is that. To fight the multiverse situation, Deadpool has to find the prime version of okay. different characters. And that's why he's teaming up with Wolverine because he's the best Wolverine in the multiverse or, oh, okay, or, right. or whatever. Okay. That's a real slap in the face to whoever is the next Wolverine. Yeah, well, they maybe need to step it up a little bit. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. And I guess this ties into that. Uh, this is a rumor via My Time to Shine Hello who says, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine will be the two leads in Secret Wars. And that speaks to me of like, well, we can't get Robert Downey Jr., we can't get Chris Evans. But I think there you've got legacy characters that are kind of built into existing universes mm, that people true. like. People like Spider-Man, different Spider-Man. People liked Logan and to bring them back together. I think that is a safer and more interesting yeah. play than bringing back Robert Downey Jr. and whatever, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Oh, my God, look at them. They're doing a big handshake. The two guys, I recognize them and they're two doing guys. a big handshake. Boy, it's good to meet you. I'm Wolverine and I'm Spider-Man. We're both 50. <laughs> That's right. So there you go. Yeah, okay. Again, who knows how much of that is like accurate or true. I mean, Variety have a pretty decent track record, but, you know. That's true. We'll find out some of this. My time to us. shine. Hello. Who knows? Who knows? In my opinion. We don't know. Mm. We don't know a goddamn thing. They're in the spotlight, though, and we got to respect gotta, that. Got to respect it. 